All the thrills and spills of football, eh? This is why it's the greatest sport in the world. I don't care what anyone says because you get games like that that you just don't get in any other sport. And look, I, I rewrote this reaction so many times in my head over the course of those 124 and a half minutes where they got those extra time in extra time minutes from, I don't know. But I think the greatest thing we need to take away from this isn't the fact that we've got ourselves a spot in the semi-final of the FA Cup. That, that in itself is obviously a good achievement. But we actually think about it. Over the balance of the 120 minutes, we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool today. And I know there's going to be people going, well, hang on a minute, you should have lost that 4 or 5-1 in that second half. Well, actually, we should have been three or four goals up in the first half to begin with. So I think on the overall balance of play... Manchester United were the better team in the first half and went in losing. Liverpool were the better team in the second half and it went to extra time because they lost the second half. And then extra time was very 50-50. Both teams had chances. Both teams scored goals and we got the last minute winner. So if that's not a perfect toe-to-toe -to -toe match and a perfect toe-to-toe -to -toe cup cut tie I don't really know what is so to anyone that's saying that Liverpool should have won that game I won't have that for a minute because well again I like to say like I said Liverpool should have won it in that second half but as an overall game it's wrong to say that they should have won that match because Manchester United should have had more in the first half and that's what was most frustrating is that I was actually going to come in here at half time and pre-record a little section saying how it was the best first half performance I've seen from Manchester United so far this season and lo and behold we went in at half time 2-1 down and the attitude of the second half reflected how we then went in to that first half at 2-1 down because in the second half we just weren't interested again until all of a sudden we were and we'll get to that shortly but let's talk about that first half first I thought he got the tactics near perfect and the reason I say near perfect is because there was those gaping gaps in midfield and I think a big mistake Liverpool made was taking Dominic Savoschley off because he was getting acres and acres and acres in behind McTominay, Bruno and Maynou. Other than that, I thought tactically we'd set up really well. I thought Hoyland was fantastic. I thought the defence was brilliant. wan just played Salah off the pitch. Literally, Salah went off like because wan played him off the pitch. Um, defensively, again, I thought we were just absolutely brilliant. I thought Lindelof was good. I thought Varane was good. I thought Dallow was good. I thought Onana in goal, bar one flap in the second half. I thought Onana was really good. Mainu was, for the 70 minutes he was on the pitch, the best player on the pitch, in my opinion. And then it just, <clears throat> there was still a few little issues going forward in the likes of McTominay was still a little bit sloppy. Rashford was wasting chances. McTominay himself wasted chances. And this, like I said, we should have been probably 2 or 3 nil up before Liverpool scored. And that even of itself is a good achievement because not many people gave us a chance in this game. I thought I could see it being a 1-0 Manchester United, but I went for a 2-1 Liverpool prediction, which towards the end of the game looked like it was going to be a bang on prediction. But then the ugly habits came back once again, started off by Marcus Rashford once again, who has just let Quanta run. Like, don't get me wrong, I thought Quanta had a very good game. Looks like a very good young player. Hopefully, he's another one that's going to make his way through the England system. He's apparently been called up to the under-21s for this international break, taking Branthwaite's spot as he goes into the main team. We're obviously looking for new young centre-backs with England. Quanta looks like a good one. But Rashford's just let him go. He's absolutely let him go. Creates that opening, makes an overload. Nunes to McAllister. Could Manu have closed it down quicker? Maybe, but it's in the back of the net. And all of the hard work, everything that we'd done up until that 45th minute, undone by Marcus Rashford's laziness. And then it's compounded just seconds later by what Bruno Fernandes does and what the whole team does. We take that kick off and it's like, oh my God, we've conceded. Oh no. Oh no, we've conceded. Panic back to Onana. Panic out to Varane. Everyone's in trouble. wan gets caught in the corner. Bruno comes in, sees Joe Gomez coming, sticks his ass out, falls over. Gomez gets the ball. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Bruno's still down. wan flings his hands in the air. Ball comes across, and before you know it, it's in the back of the net, and it's 2-1 Liverpool. And it's not good enough. Again, we talk about it so often when we do these reactions. You have to stay switched on. You have to keep your head. And they didn't. Rashford switched off. 
And off the back of it, the whole team lost their heads. And Liverpool go in at 2-1. Second half, the players were not interested. And you know what I'm going to say, because if you've watched my reactions enough, you know what I'm going to say. It started raining. And when it starts raining, these Manchester United players, they can't be bothered. And I'm not just going to say it was just because we were 2-1 down, because I genuinely think the rain plays a part. Whenever, for whatever reason, when it starts raining, these Man United players can't be bothered to run. And obviously that then reflects on everything else and obviously the situation. It just makes us look bad. And again, like we've already spoken about, Liverpool should have been probably 3 or 4-1 up before we get our equaliser. That second half performance, not good enough for Manchester United. The substitutions as well, initially, I was not happy about. Turns out in the end they worked out wonders. But again, that's just that's the joys of football management. Wan-Bissaka shouldn't have come off. Hoyland shouldn't have come off. They were both having fantastic games. But obviously that was the plan. And it's ended up paying off because the players that came on were fantastic. Anthony did not stop running. Ahmad did not stop running. Massive credit to the pair of them because they dragged this team back into this game. And so did Alejandro Garnacho. I don't know how I've gone six minutes without really mentioning him yet. Alejandro Garnacho was man of the match by an absolute mile. Mainu was the man of the match for the 70 minutes he was on the pitch. Garnacho was the man of the match for the whole 124 minutes because he was absolutely incredible. And the academy players really showed their worth today. Ahmad, Garnacho, Mainu really, really showed their worth today. And obviously, like I say, we get the goal. Anthony, it all comes from Garnacho again, running at Bradley, gets inside, little bit of luck. Anthony with the 360 no scope on his right foot, bottom corner, 2 2. I don't believe it. We've still got a chance. What frustrates me the most about this entire game is that when that goal went in they all of a sudden wanted to play again now obviously I've said I joked about the whole rain thing but in that second half they weren't interested even the likes you know I've, I've seen the praises of McTominay and Dallow for how good seasons they're having even they weren't putting in enough effort Bruno lost his head probably could have been sent off but at least he was still running Rashford wasn't running you know, McTominay wasn't running. Dallow wasn't running. It, it matters. It really matters. But the moment that goal went in to make it 2-2, all of a sudden it breathed new life into them. It's like, oh, we're still in this. We can still run. We can still fight. We can still keep going. And it's like, you should be like that when you're 2-1 down, not when it's 2-2. I mean, by all means, be like that when it's 2-2 because we want to get a winner. But don't. Switch off. Don't fall apart when you're losing. Play with that intensity when you are losing and you will get better results. Then obviously the Rashford miss. I thought that was it. I thought we were through. Granted, he may have been offside. They've not shown the lines on it, but I can't believe he missed. But we'll let him off because he got the third. But again, I don't think Rashford had a very good game today. I have to say it. Sloppy in the first goal. Missed the chance to win the game. Goes into extra time, obviously. And like I say, it was pretty even. Considering we had Bruno at centre-back, Anthony at left-back, Maguire and Dallow, and then basically just attack-minded midfielders, I am gobsmacked that we kept that extra time period even. Liverpool get a lucky goal. Again, a little bit of a switch-off, but it's another deflection. No blame on Onana, but it's 3-2 to Liverpool. But they kept going. They kept driving. They kept pushing. Their heads didn't go this time. Because they believed. And I think that was a massive shift in their mindset. It was actually, when we went 2-1 down, even though we weren't playing well, we still found a way to get back into it. And it was almost like this time they went 3-2 down. It was like, no, we can go again and we can get the equaliser. And we put the pressure on. Liverpool lose the ball. McTominay on one leg drives through midfield, feeds it into Rashford. And with arguably the hardest chance he had, because he had to take it from across his body without even thinking about it. Didn't even know where, I'm assuming he knew where the goal was, but you know what I mean? It's all instinctive. Puts it in the back of the net. Well done, Marcus. 3-3. Three, three. And then the winner just encapsulates everything. It's why I titled the video the United way. The youngsters, the academy boys, did not stop fighting. Corner comes in, headed clear. Harvey Elliott gets the ball. Ahmed goes, no, I want that ball. He gets there first, gets it to Garnacho, and we're off. Drive, pace, Garnacho after 122 minutes, absolutely, should be absolutely knackered, but just keeps going, keeps driving. It's an awful pass, 
Don't get me wrong. It's an awful pass from Garnacho to play it into Di uh, Diallo. But he makes the most of it. He squirms it in the far right-hand corner. And it's 4-3. And he gets sent off for taking his shirt off. And we have those two and a half minutes of panic where, again, I don't know where we got all that added time from, but we did. And we hold on. And Manchester United will play Coventry City in the semi-final of the FA Cup. A, I'm apparently not allowed to say mid-table championship team. The top of mid-table, the bottom of the first bracket of championship teams. Who, to their credit, played very well against Wolves yesterday. And I'm sure will give us a hell of a game at Wembley in a few weeks' time. Mark Robbins, the ironic manager in charge, of course, the man who saved Sir Alex Ferguson's job all those years ago. Can he assist in saving Eric Ten Hag's job by letting Manchester United win in the FA Cup semi-final? We will find out soon. But ultimately, like I say, I am over the moon that we have got through. I am still a little bit mixed about our attitude in that second half. But... Ultimately, we've got the job done. We've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe and beaten Liverpool, which is a massive, massive achievement for this Manchester United side. And hopefully gives us some good momentum for after the international break because we've got them again in three weeks' time. I can't remember who the game is that we've got next week after the international break. We've got one more game, then it's Liverpool again. So hopefully we can build off this result and make a big push for those Champions League places and the FA Cup final. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. It's been an absolutely chaotic three hours because this game kicked off at half three and it's now half six. Mental. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you again very soon with some more international predictions.